I smell like... Oh, man. Oh, we're alive. Yeah, we're alive. Hey, it's another Star Wars Legends podcast. <laughs> whoop de fucking do I'm Jeremy. <laughs> That's John Sadler. And a new guy. I'm Dylan. Dylan, John Tuttle. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. John Sadler, we all know it. And, no. um... And that's Alec. He was the realist and then never made videos. <laughs> yep. Hey, actually, I can explain. So, here's the story. Went to go record a video. Turns out, computer shit and I couldn't record without so much stuttering. So, boom. Ding, out ding. Now I'm a musician. I got SoundCloud. Check it out. Cleaning product. It's cancer. Alec, I think you're the first person, other than Jeremy, to have cursed on the Star Wars Legends podcast. Oh, am I not allowed to do that? <laughs> no, it's just funny. We've gone five episodes. Let's go there and Jeremy has cursed. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, is, no, like, is this like the it's Can I go to prison for this? No. But if you're wondering why... Uh, well, if you're wondering why Jeremy is in such a bad mood, it's because he's been watching Rebels all day. Probably. If only I could suck my asshole. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, oh. So, Al- Alec, for those of you who don't know, is our resident filthy casual. Not even that. I don't even think you like Star Wars that much, and I'm talking <laughs> about a beer bottle. Um, well, I mean, I, I used to, but um, that's good. I don't like... It's just because all I've watched is the movies, like, and I want to, like, learn more. The lore is interesting. Oh, it's a start. Yeah, it is a start. Episode 7 kind of started it all. When I was like, yeah, all right, I w- might as well learn about something. And then I learned right. about something, and I was you like, hey, this is kind of interesting. the worst things possible to get into the EU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, yeah, that's it's weird. That's like getting into the EU because you really like the Infinities comics. Well, I kind of forgot Star Wars existed until Episode 7. I forgot Episode 7 existed until the night before, and my friend gave me a free ticket to the night before showing. And then I kind of forgot it existed after. All 12 of our listeners are like, what the hell is Alex doing on, Alec doing on this podcast? Zero viewers. What are you talking about? <laughs> This wasn't planned. They just thought I was going to do another Tuesday treadmill talks, and that'd be the end <laughs> today. And in all honesty, that's, that was going to be the end. Oh, for those of you who don't know, I run a fitness vlog called Tuesday Treadmill Talks, where I talk about fitness for maybe 10 seconds and then complain the rest of the time while out of breath from the treadmill. It's, it's the best thing since Can Rants. <laughs> it really Can is. Rants was pretty successful. Yeah, Tuesday Treadmill Talks isn't. <laughs> I got a new desk. Ooh, you or me? Me. Oh, that's nice, dude. Yeah, and I have three monitors. <laughs> Two of them were free. And this is why we should edit this podcast. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Uh, I'm sorry. The last Linux test I recorded, which was a fucking horrible train wreck. But um, don't worry about it. Anyway, so let's get to the first topic, the billboard. This It's been so long since we did one of these, so let's talk about what happened with the billboard, which Alec knows nothing about. What is the billboard? Well, did we... Do we even talk about the billboard on episode five? Oh. All right, so the billboard was a project that myself and uh, four others, five if you conclude Matt, uh, were tried to put together... Matt. Um, I have a Facebook... Basically Basically, the idea was we would purchase a billboard um, saying, asking Lucasfilm to please continue the expanded universe, and we put it in San Francisco close to the Lucasfilm office so that I'll be... You guys actually did this? Yeah. Yeah. Did you crowdfund it? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, yes, we did. But the uh, new Lucasfilm office, all the Lucasfilm employees would see it on their way to work every day. It was a multiple month endeavor. I think we started in early October, and we didn't start funding it and like the crowdfunding effort until December, yes, which we found out after we started was a really bad time to do it because everyone is saving money for the holidays. And I think in like the first two weeks, we got maybe like twenty percent of it funded, 
And then the last two weeks after Christmas and the holidays was over, we got the rest of it in like 17 days or something. That, that's that's really cool. I, I didn't know you guys did that. I don't actually know who you guys are. Like, I know Jeremy's a person, <laughs> but I don't know your organization. Can person. I learn about that, yeah. dude? Uh, spoilers. Uh, Alec is my son. Yeah. Due to long explanation of time travel. It's not time travel. How old are you, Jeremy? Hey. Hey. No, I mean, are you like 21? 22? Yeah. 22? No, he turns he turns uh, four this year. Shut oh, up, Dylan. I'm sorry, five. He turned I'm five. 15, spoiler, I guess. Um, yeah, you'd be set. Yeah, yeah, time travel, yeah. Seven-year-olds can't have kids. Can or they? can they? I don't think they can. I don't think Mark, firms ready for that. Point, upside down question mark. I'm drunk, by the way. Very. Uh, but anyway, yeah. the Billboard project, it did fund. We got the necessary funds to do it. Um, the Billboard will be going up the week of April 18th, I believe. I'm on the page now. Yeah, the week of the 18th, and it'll be up for um, 30 days, which covers both... Uh, April 25th, which is Death Star Day, or the day that the EUSD canonized, and May the 4th, which is Star Wars Day. Of course, if you're watching this podcast, you probably already knew that. Mm. But yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of stress. Big, big part of... Uh, big headache for me for those few months when we were trying to get it done. Oh, Alex Star, you're an asshole. Ooh. Oh, let's get into this. Let's get into this for the last fucking time. Well, you probably understand. Oh, you want me to explain? Well, this asshole... I'm the most upset about it. (laughs) Well, well, this asshole named Alex Starr that I've made, like, two can rants about because he doesn't doesn't know how to shut up. Oh, yeah, I saw those. I just never got around to watching them. Sorry. I'm not loyal. Yeah, fuck you. Anyway. (laughs) Yeah. He decided to make a video, like, he decided to donate all sorts of money, and then got it refunded, and then he had the balls to say, hey, I helped fund this, and acted like a fucking liar, and then acted like a crybaby when I called him out on it. So, so fuck you. Alright. It actually did a lot more damage than we thought it would, because at the time that he pulled the money, the billboard had already funded Mm-hmm. We in the Billboard team did not know that it was possible for people to refund money. It kind of got us into a panic. We were still barely over what we needed because the way it's set up, it was set up, was that after the 30 days, if we got our goal, goal, we would, if we got our goal, all was good. We would put it towards the Billboard. But if we didn't hit the goal, all the money would automatically get refunded to the donors, and we would basically have to start over. This was and Kickstarter, right? The Indiegogo. Kickstarter provided... Uh, Kickstarter would have required us to do perks, which we would have added... We would have needed the goal to be about two or three times as big as it was in order to fund all the perks. You could have just uh, did a video that said thank you. Literally only like 30%, 33% of the money we would have raised would have actually been going to the billboard, and that was not something we wanted to do. Uh Alright. So, Billboard's funded. It's going to come up. We're all going to make a pilgrimage to San Fran to look at it. Well, two of us from the Billboard team, myself included, have confirmed that we're coming out. Uh, Uh, I'm a a maybe. You're the closest person. The other two more members of the Billboard team, I should say, one lives in the UK, one lives in Australia. So, coming out to San Francisco is going to be near impossible for them, so they have an excuse. The other four of us that are actually from the United States... (laughs) Other two that aren't already going there, the other two are thinking about it. Mm. Oh, well, let's let's segue out of this to something else. Oh God, I had it on, on the brain what we were gonna do, and I don't remember. Oh yeah, you play Armada against yourself again. Um yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a really messed up game. I uh. My star Des- my Imperial Star Destroyer ended up um, in the first opening salvo, essentially one-shotting the M- my um, MC-30 and completely destroyed it, like crit, 
literally rolled max damage, like perfect amount of accuracies. It was at it was at two it was at close range already, but it couldn't fire. So it was at close range, so it couldn't use either of its um, uh, evade tokens, and then the redirect tokens that much damage were essentially useless. So they lost that. Then a salvo from my victory class star destroyer fatally crippled. After two turns, fatally crippled the MC-80, my Mon Calmire cruiser, cruiser. The Starfighter, the f- fighter screens basically smashed into each other and destroyed each other. So in the third turn of the game, I essentially rammed the star, my um, Raider into the MC, into the Mon Calamari cruiser, destroying both of them. Basically, with half the game left, leading, leaving with an Imperial Star Destroyer, a Victory Class Star Destroyer, against a CR-90. And it's at that point I was thinking, and if this was a real match, the uh, the captain of the CR-90 would be frantically yelling at his navigation officer to punch in hyperspace codes to get the hell out of there. <laughs> it was fun. You know what I did? I read some new canon. Hmm. I contemplated death afterwards. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Obi-Wan and Anakin. And the, okay, so there's a new series of comics out called Obi-Wan and Anakin. And it has an interesting concept. It's one that hasn't been done in a while in the EU, so they're ripping off old stuff instead of new stuff. You know, Dylan, it's the usual. Um, they go right. to Obi-Wan and Anakin go to a planet where they don't know Jedi exist. I'm pretty sure that's been done before. Nothing comes to mind, but sure, I'm let's go with it. Pretty uh, sure it this is kind of like a random question. Do the Ewoks uh, are they really like intelligent people? Like, ask just, Matt. Like, they're like because if they're not, then I imagine they don't know what Jedi's are or what spaceships are. I Ewoks mean, are weird. They're semi-intelligent. They're like they're sentient but not intelligent. Is I think is the best way to ex- describe them. So. Yeah. They're like bears. Yeah, oh. they're, but they're not real bears. I mean, <laughs> has Star Wars actually had a real bear character, you know? Like an actual grizzly? Um, it probably has something close to it. But let me Google this. Let me find a... Anyway, if, Chuck Wendig, if Chuck Wendig wrote it, it would, they would be space bears. And, and they would have space diapers on, and they'd say true dad. And they'd ride <laughs> tie fighters that wibble and wobble. There'd be plenty of homosexual characters. Uh, and if you didn't like it, that means you hated the homosexual bears, and he'd call you a bigot. I'm anyway. Not, I'm not wrong. Is that what that, that's probably the plot of Aftermath Hard Life. It comes out in July. No, it's Aftermath Life Death. Oh. What one's Hardline? I think that's the third one. And I also know they're doing New Republic Bloodlines. I don't fucking care at this point. <laughs> I've run the raid, so I have to know when these are coming out. And, and we don't have a raid for a while. Not What's until a May. A oh. raid is... Oh, they're called social media campaigns now, but everyone still calls them raids. Uh, basically, we go... We would blast social media on um, Facebook, Twitter... Google Plus, which we use now, but Google Plus is terrible. No one uses it. We basically blast um, the social media pages of Star Wars books, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, Disney, and their sorts, asking politely to continue the expanded universe. And the key is to be polite when asking if you're going to participate in these. Be very polite, and um, especially on the Del Rey page, people may try to get pick fights with you to not... Don't respond to them. They're, uh... They're just... Assholes. Trolls. Tristan. You obviously... Well, Tristan's in the Navy now, so... Oh, R.I.P. Tristan. Wait, was that racist, Tristan? Yeah. Texas racist? Yeah, dude, that guy was so <laughs> racist, I couldn't believe he actually existed. Like, I'm so confounded that he's a real person. <laughs> I thought that Tristan was just a personality, no. not a real guy. <laughs> I 
I actually... <laughs> I think Tristan is the Stephen Colbert if, like, that was the actual person and he was a lot less funny. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Tristan is the one that's behind the Minox Nest, which is kind of what's the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and for the reason that Alec has said is the reason that we broke off and did our own podcast. <laughs> He's going to see this for a <laughs> He's in the Navy now. He's we'll not going to see this, this for, for a while. Months. For a while. He's got to see it. So i got to talk to him again. <laughs> yeah, remember when you said you wanted his babies? <laughs> oh, yeah. Guys, this is live, remember? Yeah. <laughs> it's relevant. Tristan was a part of what you guys were. <laughs> Kind of. Well, he was. What? Until he shared, he was, let's just, shared a girl with his brother. Yeah, what? let's just say there's a reason he's no longer uh, an admin of things. Is he I, still part of it, just not an admin? No. No. Really. He kind of fell to the wayside. He kind of fucked off and shared the same girl with his brother. Okay, let's not get into that. This is a Star Wars podcast. We're going to oh, right, anyway, so, about Star Wars for maybe five minutes. Let's start a Tristan podcast after this. <laughs> okay, let me get back to Anakin and Obi-Wan. So, like, it's an interesting base concept. The art's really great. But here's where I get all bothered. So, like, Palpatine's playing a big role in this, and, like, he's already seducing Anakin to the dark side. But Anakin's, like, Alex's age. Oh, what's up, 15. Ooh. So, like, it doesn't make any sense continuity-wise with the prequels. At all. Now, I get him, like, hanging out with Palpatine. That happened in the EU. But them going off into the underworld of Coruscant, that's really dumb. Wait, wait, is that, like, like, philosophical underworld or, like, actually under the world, like, physically? It's what's the underworld? the undercity. It's the, the, um... So actually under the Earth's crust. Or no, not Earth, but the planet's crust. No, 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 no. It's the um it's where all the crime is. Oh, the ghetto. Yeah. Oh, okay, I get it. In Coruscant there's multiple layers of the city. Oh, like Judge Redden. Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly like that. But like See. it doesn't make any sense. And it made and I can't get into some, the Marvel Star Wars again. I have attempted again, Dylan. Is it Marvel? Huh? Oh, yeah. He actually loves that series. In fact, I think Marvel Issue 3 is his favorite one. It's why he hasn't put out a, a, a review of it yet. Uh, I'd rather drink arsenic. Well, how, how does this happen? <laughs> um, Disney bought Star Wars, so now they're produced by Marvel Comics, and they're really Oh, dumb. that's right. And uh, Darth Vader, it has its moments, but otherwise it's pretty dumb, too. And I can't get into Kanan because that involves re watching Rebels, and I won't... I'm not a masochist. I mean, I am watching Filoni's Clone Wars. It took me six months to finish the first season. And you're reading the Aftermath trilogy? Oh, God. I forgot I was doing that. I thought I was bad having to trudge through Crystal Star and Planet of Twilight, but... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, speaking of Marvel Comics, so they're actually touching Force Awakens material. For the first time in this new canon, Poe Dameron's going to have his own comic series. Hmm. So this is my whole weird, my gripe with this whole new canon. People want to know about Episode 7, but they like refuse to talk about it. Why do they refuse? Got these Journey to the Force Awakens books that have nothing to do with Episode Seven at all. I mean, Aftermath was Aftermath. I had Aftermath in the toilet, and it was better than <laughs> Aftermath. Uh, <laughs> we got Lost Stars that part of it doesn't even take place during Journey to the Force Awakens. So after Post Jedi, we got we got a trilogy of. Or, Original trilogy character books that have nothing to do with it. Um, then we got a bunch of picture and sticker books oh, and like. Oh, oops. and we got um, Shattered Empire, which read like a bad Bantam book. It's like a bad 
It was like the wor- four of the bad stories that you find in Tales from the New Republic. Like really bad adventure journal stories. <coughs> and so we're finally getting something that's actually related to The Force Awakens. I mean, we did get that stupid kids book <laughs> that like no one read except for Geeks Attic. Yeah. Which one? Lost Stars? No, the the before the Force Awakens is okay. right now. Because I was going to say Lost. All I hear about Lost Stars is that it's the best of the new canon so far. Yeah, the Twilight of Star Wars. Yeah, so I'm actually a little curious on this whole Poe Dameron thing. I'm going to give it a shot. Is it called X-Wing Poe Squadron? No. Oh, I mean, Are they going to follow it up with, like, the courtship of Rey? Uh, yeah. Like, heir to the First Order? I think the, the Crystal Hux. <laughs> or um, Planet of Ren. Or the Truce of Jakku. What's another good one? Vector Phasma. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the list goes on. Um, but no. I, I like no clue what we're talking about. I, miss, mm-hmm. I really Got miss reading one. the expanded universe in all seriousness. And I talked about this briefly in the previous video, but I'm going to really get into this with you right now, Dylan. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you. I am so drained of the new canon. It's draining to read it. Because it... It's like Pablo Hidalgo doesn't care anymore. He runs the new canon, and things are inconsistent. And Lords of the Sith had an Ahsoka flashback in it. And it's... Dylan... It was an Ahsoka flashback. Oh shit, we got one viewer. Hi. Who's watching this? That's a good question. I, I apologize uh, to anyone who's watching. Right. I would like to... Okay, viewer. Seriously. What have you done in your life? That this is how you spend your Tuesday afternoons. Or Wednesday morning if you're on the East Coast. It's not even afternoon, it's evening. Evening. It's like fucking night. Yeah. Unless you live on, like, Johnston Island, and I guess it's, like, mid-noon. Or, like, Hawaii. Even Hawaii, it's late at evening. No, Johnston Island, which is in the middle of the Pacific, where we, hit, but no one lives on it. No one knows what I'm talking about. In or maybe show. he's in Australia, where it's been tomorrow for, like, ten hours now. Oh. <laughs> it could be Jaden. Anyway, back to whatever we were talking about. Oh, uh, Alec watched The Phantom Menace. How was that? It it was lacking. It was disappointing of the factor of waste of time. Like, I, I didn't... It, it's just there's, like, two hours of just nothing, and apparently that half hour I slept through of something. <laughs> Did you sleep to the very end when, like, all the badass stuff happened? Like, the yeah. Duel of the Fates and the Battle of Naboo? Like, so for Valentine's Day, I got this candy bar, right? And it was... <laughs> Hold on, I got... Well, I... I'll be right back. Let me go grab it. <laughs> oh, are you shitting me? Okay, um... Dylan's episode still... 6 of Star Wars Legends, the tangent episode. And the, the drunk... The drunk, the loner, and the kid. The eccentric <laughs> child. <laughs> I'll let you can be the judge of who's who. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm back. So it's this Milky Way Midnight Dark, and it's not like there's no like caramel. I don't. It's like just marshmallow inside. Wait, 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 wait. You got this on Valentine's Day. Yes. Yeah, that was that. That was over ten days ago. Yeah. Why do you still have the candy bar? You haven't eaten a candy in ten days? <laughs> yeah, I have two more. They're really gross. Was. I, I tried to eat one. I can understand a movie. few days, but like, who does? Who has a candy bar and just sits there with it for ten days? Uh, I also got this special chocolate my girlfriend gave me from her chocolate shop. Yeah, I, I couldn't eat that. Um, 
and some homemade muffins. I didn't eat that either. It's all kind of really gross. <laughs> okay, muffins I just didn't want to try because the candy bar and her shop chocolate, like, so the normal stuff that's like, all right, this is chocolate, it tastes good. But then there's this weird shiny chocolate that looks like a very polished rock. <laughs> and it's so gross. It has this weird, like, filling. And there's one that's checkerboarded, and after the, the polished rock, I couldn't keep going. And then I started passing out. The fucking pod racing scene happened. And... <laughs> pod racing. I liked I it, but it, it, ended took, pod racing scene. it took forever. Like I don't know why it took this long. It was like a real pod race, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I just passed out. Now, have you watched The Phantom Menace before? Yes, yes. When I was a child. Okay. You are a child. <laughs> oh god, that hurts. I ran out of beer. So what's your take on this after having read Plagius? Oh, Phantom Menace is so much better when she reads like Darth Plagius. Because you actually know what the fuck is going on. I'm not going to lie. I got the general concept by Jar Jar stepping in the poopy. But I, I, I kind of understood what was going on until, like, the Senate stuff. And then the Senate stuff makes more sense when you read Darth Plagueis. And the Trade Federation makes more sense when you read Darth Plagueis. Everything really makes more sense. I can't cool. say that enough. Read Darth Plagueis. It's a good right. one. I really I'll check read. out my review. On Stupid Chance Out Productions, the YouTube channel that you're already on. Would you get mad if I uh, if I made a YouTube channel specifically ranting against your videos? Like every time your video came out, I I do a reply to it. Oh, you could join Alex Star. <laughs> <laughs> See, I actually had this idea, Jeremy, that you should start a YouTube war with your old channel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. But anyway, I guess that's a good segue. Or a good segue as any to go into what we're reading. Oh, Alec doesn't know how to read, first of all. Well, hold on. Hold, oh, shit. we got two viewers. we got two viewers, people. Two what viewers. What are you doing with your life? Oh, never you mind. want to go home viewers. and rethink your life. Okay, okay good. Viewer, they realized that this was the wrong channel. They probably thought, <laughs> they probably thought this was comic book round table. <laughs> I'm too drunk to do my Travis impersonation. Don't get me wrong, I like Travis, but I like impersonating people I like. I got, I got my favorite Star Wars novel here, uh, Tale of Two Cities, Charles Dickens. I'm gonna read you. Oh, that's the good one. It, the, uh, it talks about space diapers. <laughs> Uh, and wibbly wobbly t oh, I'm thinking Chuck Wendy. Yeah, I'm not going to read this. I don't know why I have this book. I stole it from the library, but not stole it. They gave it away for free. So they had this pile of free books, and they're like, hey, take one book. I took two. <laughs> you hit, I bet you you hit them under your shirt. I did. <laughs> well, I had, a, I had this other ginger kid. He grabbed me one, and then he gave it to me. So it's basically stealing. <laughs> well, just... There's, there's lucky there wasn't a fire. Mm -hmm. I made a ginger joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, the hunky devil's back. So what are you reading, Jeremy? Oh, Force Awakens still. Oh, okay. Let me tell you about how long it's taking me to read this fucking thing. So, like, every time I try to sit down and force myself to read it, like, I started to like it at the beginning because it was, like, stuff I didn't know about from the new canon. I'm like, oh, that's nice. And then it became a straight-up movie adaptation novel, and I'm just like, oh, God. I'd rather... How are you alive? What, what Alec? How are you alive after last? How am I alive? Yeah. Alcohol. Uh, it's my power source. Uh, when it gets bad, start throwing in nicotine. Then when it gets really bad, you throw in Vicodin. Mm. After that, just crack. You get rid of everything, just only crack. And, and then, then you get death. into Spice. That's just life. The next thing you know, you're shooting death sticks like Cade Skywalker. First, just start smoking. Then you start drinking yourself to death. Then you start taking pills. And then you just smoke crack until you die. So Ladies and gentlemen, Alec, does. our uh, doctor of the show. <laughs> <laughs> doctor <laughs> fucking bullshit. I should have a home podcast. No, you shouldn't. No one would watch it. <laughs> Look, we now have zero viewers because of your fucking drug talk. <laughs> 
Oh my lord. Why am I even here? Why am I here? Why am I sleeping, not just sleeping on my floor? Why am I co-hosting a podcast where only where I'm the only one trying to keep us remotely on track? All right, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. Right it's now. like that. It's like that Google Hangout that never happened again, all over again. No, there's no ranting person who says "fuck Jeff Loeb" and doesn't explain. <laughs> None of that in here. And there's not another YouTuber egging him on to do it for a fucking hour. All right. So anyway, back to Force Awakens. So. Like it's, mm, it's got it's Alan Dean Foster writing, so I mean it's good nonsense. But it it really proves that the characters in Force Awakens are just, you know, it's just not that good. And it's like I'm gonna have a brain aneurysm because it's stupid. Uh, Dylan, I heard you finished New Jedi Order. Yep. That was a thing. How do you feel now? Did you just... I was, I'm happy and sad at the same time because it was so good. And I just wanted to keep going. 20 but I know books. I must. Twenty books. <laughs> it's nineteen books and a bunch of ebooks too. The ebooks all equal up to. Oh wait, and and Invasion. Mm -hmm. And Chewbacca. I have finished Invasion. Did you? Yeah. It was. It was just as bad. It never got better. It just. Meh. Holy shit, you've been reading a whole lot. So, Dark Nest now? Mm-hmm. I'm, um, I'm on the second book, Unseen Queen. How are you enjoying that? I mean, it's Troy Denning, so it's really good. Though, I feel like... I feel like I would be enjoying this book a lot more if I wasn't immediately coming off of New Jedi Order. And that's and that's a shame because this is actually a really good book, but I'm finding like when you've hit when you've hit a high like New Jedi, or at least in my opinion, it's hard to come back down to like really good when you've read excellent and you kind of get into that mindset of oh everything's going to be this good. So when something is really good but not like quite that level of good, you're just like you're left disappointed. I don't know. Oh, uh, but I'm enjoying it. I can definitely, I can definitely see how, again, knowing what's coming in the timeline with Legacy of the Force, I can definitely see the wheels turning and like the, um, the events un unfolding and all that coming up. Okay, let's let's get to questions before we wrap this up. Uh, Do I have any questions? Uh, I don't think you'll want to. You won't know what's going on. So Dark Snovia asks, he has two questions. First is, what is the worst thing that comes out of Felony's Clone Wars? He thinks it's Ahsoka. And second, do you plan on seeing the movie? Well, let's start with the second one, because that's easy. You've okay, seen it. I saw it. I haven't. You haven't. Good yeah, and I don't plan not it. seeing it. Just so he doesn't want it. to. I, uh, I, I don't. can't blame him for not wanting to. Because in my in my in my view, it's not canon to what I have set in my head of what happens after so Return of the Jedi. Watch the first half, and then after that, just don't continue ever. Oh yeah. Can I get my actual honest rating on it? Like I say, it's seven out of ten. Like I say, it's like you know, it's good if you've never seen Star Wars before. But if you have, the second half is really agonizing of why the fuck aren't they original? Like, how hard is it to be original, especially with all that lore to make something new? You know what I give it? Three out of ten. I'll tell you why right now. The first star is because the acting's really genuine throughout, and that coming off of the prequels where it's really wooden, that's that's a plus. The second is. It was cool to see Harrison Ford not being a sleepy grandpa. It was cool <laughs> to see him die. I was so happy when he died. Now Finn just needs to die. That girl needs to die. That no, robot no, needs to get no, fucking no. exploded. No, no, no. The third star goes to Daisy Ridley's butt <laughs> that I looked at the whole film. I, was just... I looked at it from, like, 
it's, I don't know. I don't know that much about you, like about Star Wars as you guys, so it's easier for me to enjoy it. All right. All right. Well, okay. first question was the worst thing Cat yeah, Felonies Clone Wars. Can I say everything? Can I second that? Actually, well, you know, here's the thing. The hope of it being good, those occasional episodes that were good, that's the worst part of Felonies Clone Wars. I can see what you mean because it's like the potential is there. Like Matt says, the potential of showing the heroes on both sides. That there is... Again, the Clone, War, the Clone Wars before Filoni did his show had already been covered to death. It was already a big jumbled mess. It wasn't even... It was... Sli- well, with Tartoski... The Clone Wars adventures that were spinoffs of Tartoski's Tardos- stuff, that's a mess. Um, it was It was a mess already. It wasn't that bad of a mess, but it was still a pretty big mess. Especially when trying to go into the continuity. Then the Clone Wars, then the then Filoni comes along and just makes it even worse. Like The uh, Mandalorians being pacifists, mm-hmm. Darth Maul showing up without a butt. How does he poop? How does he poop? <laughs> the, the, I asked the real questions here. Swift Justice Jeremy here. It's uh, like if you got home, right? And all of your stuff is on the fl- all of the stuff on all your shelves is on the floor. That's how the clone that's how the Clone Wars era was before Filoni. I mean, it's kind of bad, but it's relatively fixable. But then, like the dog, then the door opens up, and a bunch of dogs like just start running all over, tracking mud everywhere, and ripping everything up, and peeing on everything. That's how that's how the Clone Wars got with af- like just the continuity of the of that Clone Wars era got after Filoni was done with it. That's oh, an what are some other bad things from the Clone Wars? The Mortis trilogy. Oh God! Anything uh, that had to do with Ahsoka. Oh yeah, everything that had to do with Ahsoka. Up, uh, Anakin's voice actor. Um, anything that had to do with Jar Jar. The uh, poisoned tea storyline. I have a continuing question. Why does no one like Jar Jar? Is Jar Jar's... Oh, actually, that's not true. I've met two people that do, and I fucking can't stand them. Hey, I'm, I'm one of them. I enjoy him. I hate you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Jar Jar is really annoying, and he stepped in the poopy. Yeah, I saw that. It did. Anyway. Oh, I hate him. He's, he exists, and I enjoy his existence. So, another question... This is from Darth Beard. Uh, if you could live as any character in the Star Wars universe, as in live out the events that actually took place, not at your own spin, who would it be and why? Dylan, go first. Okay, this is going to be a really cheeky answer, but I would be Crook. Because A, he has a very long life. He's long lived. He would get me through the entire Clone Wars, so I would know the exact... Exactly what happened in the Clone Wars, but he also lives past the rebellion, past the dark, the quote unquote dark times. So I'd get to know what he was doing that whole time, and he lives up into the legacy era, meaning I would also get to learn what happens in between the time between Crucible and the legacy era. And foreseeably, he keeps living. His death hasn't been made yet, so he keeps living on past the Legacy Era, so I would even know what happened immediately preceding Legacy 2. That's who I would pick. Can I go next? Yeah. Sure. Uh, this this is more like a type of person. I don't know what they're called. You remember, I can't remember which movie, but it was one of the original three, where they're like in the desert planet, whatever, on the ship, and there's these people with like these brown cloaks, they're short, and they got like the black darkness Jawas? faces. You want to be a Jawa? Oh, yeah. yeah. They, like, poked fucking someone with a stick? I want to be that guy who pokes people with a stick. I oh, want that. Tuscan Raider? No, 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 not Tuscan Raider. You can even be an wanna... Ewok. That's how they're first introduced, poking Leia with a spear. Yeah, but they're fucking bears, but not real bears. <laughs> that... <laughs> Matt's yeah. cringing. Somewhere Matt right now is just, like, <laughs> having nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, right. poor Yum Nub is having PTSD <laughs> Right. Jeremy, what were they called? The, oh, the, the little guys called? that zapped R2-D2? Yeah. Those are Jawas. Jawas. How do you spell that? J-A-W-A. J-A-W-A. 
Oh, oh, J W A. Yes. K-A-W-S, Jaws. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I want to be, Jaws. They're so awesome. Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> okay, Could you imagine uh, jo- a Jaws, but like instead of like humans, they were just three Jawas who were trying to operate a ship? <laughs> can, can someone... Can someone please make a fan film of a shot for shot remake of Jaws, but instead of the characters, it's just three Jawas the whole time? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm quoting you. On that right now, Dylan. Time. I'm quoting you right now, Dylan. <laughs> oh, oh, Dylan, you're gonna hate me for this one. What? Waru. <laughs> Why to find out what he is? Yeah. I actually don't mind Waru because he was only in. Matt he Wilkins. only infected one book. Well, uh, Matt Wilkins probably just puked up blood. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Waru is the antagonist of Crystal Scar- he's a Star. He's, he's a, a golden gl- gelatinous cube is the best way to describe him. And it looks like swimming around in him, and it's really, really weird. Of course, isn't that the same look that Luke gets brainwashed by a cult? Or was that Planet of Twilight? <laughs> no, that yeah, was the same book. The cult was the cult of war, though. Uh, what was it? Or I, I'd be that hut dark Jedi that Leia fights. Yeah, that one's Planet, Planet of Twilight. And Planet of Twilight. That was the one where Luke and Leia both get marooned on the same planet, but they don't know that they're marooned. They don't know that the other one is there on the same planet. And Luke is like, and Leia is like drugged half the time by a hut. And he's being held by a hut Jedi for a ransom or something. And Meanwhile, Luke, Luke can't use the force. Because it will, <laughs> someone will get, like, struck by lightning. Or, like, there'll be a tornado or something. <laughs> Anytime he uses the force, so he can't use the force. And there's, like, three different dark Jedi who are also on that planet. One of them being the hut Jedi, who are also bad, but aren't kind of connected to each other. Actually, like, all... In all seriousness, I'd be AG from Legacy 2, who may also be C-3PO, if anyone's familiar with that than- fan theory. What? Where'd a- that come from? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, should we explain that fan theory? Okay, so there's an HK... Isn't No, he's not an HK. He's an IG or whatever. He's an assassin droid. And he's actually a really chill assassin droid, assassin droid for being an assassin droid. And he's he's Anya Solo's one of her teammates essentially in Legacy Two. And he says basically he owed, protector. He, he essentially says he owed like Han Solo a favor or something. And and because R two D two shows up in Legacy One, ends up being a side character. And there's no C-3PO. People are like, "Hey, uh, AG might just be C-3PO's conscious put into an assassin droid." Because he's fairly docile as for an assassin droid. He uh, he's he's protective of the solos, and that C-3PO uh, during the from New Jedi onward onward was relative was regularly contemplating. Basically, his not be existed anymore, and fearing a mind wipe, like contemplating becoming sentient, this section, um, or self-aware of his own mortality, and was trying to stop, like, not really be immortal, but try to stop his own demise. Well, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, the EU gets pretty in depth with things. Yeah. That's- I can rip C three PO if that's him. Well, I mean, uh, he's pretty awesome. He's yeah, he's pretty badass. I'm not gonna lie, he was one of the best parts of Legacy Two. <laughs> well, I like Legacy Two overall. I think it was a decent storyline. Some of the stuff in it was a little meh, like when they would use like Earth terms instead of like EU terms for things. Mm-hmm. You're, that really bothered you at the time, Dylan. It bothered me a lot too. Anytime, anytime they do that, it bothers me because it just breaks the immersion. Okay. Um, any more questions from? I think there's one. Uh, 
Yeah, what is your favorite EU Sith, Jedi, and non-Force user character? Oh, Jesus, it was this one. You want to go first, Dylan? You want yes. Me? So I don't generally like Sith, but if I had to choose a favorite, it'd be Darth Krayt, because he's OP. Like, really OP. Um, second one would be Kate. My Jedi would be Kate Skywalker, because Kate Skywalker is, like, my favorite Jedi of all time. And then non-force user would be Pelion, because Pelion is awesome. Let's see. I'm going to go also... Oh, well, for my Sith, I choose Darth Plagueis, of course. That goes without saying. Very interesting, his whole thing of he wanted to be immortal, and he wanted to stop people from dying. Very interesting character. My Jedi would have to be... B, Nomi Sunrider. On account of... She had the ability to rip people from the Force. Well, I mean, Darth Krayt had the ability to bring himself back from the dead. That's... That's right, he does. I forgot. (laughs) Um, And non-Force user... Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go with Darman from Republic Commando. I thought you were going to go with Mr. Bones. Roger, Roger. Well, it's EU, dude. So <laughs> Mr. Bones. Yeah, I want a B1 battle droid that wears bones and has a fucking machete. <laughs> and just says, Roger, Roger, Master Timon. He's the biggest crybaby on the planet. And his mom's a fucking shitty parent. <laughs> and the list of list of Chuck Wendig characters goes on. Uh, Alec, do you have anything? Well, I don't know what's in the EU. Like, how the no. Are the Jawas the account? Did you just get put Jawas for everything? I, I really like them. <laughs> sure. I'm That's making cool. that my Steam picture now. All I'm right. Get a picture. Oh, okay. there's one more question. It's from Elizabeth Tops. It's where can I get in contact with Tristan from the Minox Nest? Is uh, I heard he's single. Well, Tristan, we've talked about this before, is currently in the Navy, so I'll, I'll probably start there. And he's a blimey racist. <laughs> He'll give you the, the semen. <laughs> I knew someone was going to make that joke. I just knew it. Oh, okay, I pose a question to both of you that I just forgot. Fucking kill me. <laughs> I have a question, and I forgot what it is. That's <laughs> I, a great I, way to end a podcast. I seriously thought of it, and then we had that triple-decker question, and I, I had to focus on that. Wait, who were you asking us? Should we just end on the cliffhanger? Like, I have a question for you, audience, and then just cut the feed right there. Yeah. Next time on Legends Podcasts. Oh, wait, we didn't we ask... talk Rebels enough. You mean um, Clone Wars? Both. They're the same thing in my book. Well, I think we did a lot. I nope. think it... We did a lot. I mean, come on. We had a whole th- question about why Rebel, why Clone Wars is bad. Would we don't do an entire podcast where we don't talk bad about Clone- Filoni once? That'll be a day. No, well, that, that will never happen, because fuck that guy. We should do a drinking game every time we start making I've fun already of Filoni. I've drinking, dude. I, I might die of alcohol poisoning at this point if we keep up a game like that. It's like the Edward drinking game. Uh, how many times does his feet either cut out or he has to mute his mic because he lives in a fucking grocery store? <laughs> <laughs> or the, the list goes on. I thought he wasn't a part of it anymore. Did he come back? Oh, dude, dude, dude. I'm not kidding. There's a Jawas poster for Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a> Jaws. <laughs> oh, I remember my question. Okay. Worst EU author, go. Bonta and McIntyre. Tim Levin. 
And we all do in Chuck Wendig we trust. I thought it was in Felony we trust. No. No. Is there a way where we can show this poster on the... No. Oh. I'll just make it the... You know what I'll do? I'll just make it the thumbnail for this. <laughs> <laughs> I just it in the Skype. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, guys, have a nice evening. No, it's wrong. It's supposed to be the Jawas are the sailors, and the shark is eating the Jawas. Let's remake it. No. We have the technology. <laughs> Straight up now. <laughs> But if you have a question for us, please leave in the comments. We love answering questions. It smells like we'll probably get bo in here. We'll get back. We'll uh, we'll answer all your questions on the next minox. Uh, the next not minox nest legends podcast, which will probably come out in December of next year. Yeah. Because it's that's like how long it takes these to make. Uh, later. Is it hard to make. We done.